How's it going everyone? So uh, last week I posted a tutorial about delivering designs and went through uh, some of the methodologies and some of the workflow of how I've worked with engineers in the past um, in Netflix, Google, and now at Design Inc. And in doing that video through the comments and other conversations realized that there was a lot of little pieces that I've missed. So I'm going to do a three-part series going through different parts of my process and some of the, the details and technicalities around my workflow and kind of how that workflow has evolved over the years um, through different tools. So for the first video, I want to get into something very simple and very mundane, but something people ask for, which is file structure. I'm going to go through just simply what I do in the Finder, how I stay organized, and how that folder structure evolves over time um, through the project. This file structure video is going to lead into my next two videos that uh, talk more about um, these files and where they live in different applications and different software. Okay, so file structure. This is something that seems very mundane and unimportant um, in the design process. And for some people it might be. I've worked with lots of designers that are fairly unorganized, uh, that still slay and do very well. Uh, for me, it's a level of sanity and efficiency. Uh, I think when you're organized, you're more efficient, you can find things faster, you have a more methodical way of moving through the life cycle of a product. So today I'm just going to go through kind of a, a typical architecture of how I organize folders and files. Hopefully it's useful. So if you look at uh, this folder, I've been using this, this camo project as an example. Um, I'm using it because a lot of the stuff, you know, I'm doing in Design Inc. or that I've done at Google or Netflix, I can't fully share and dig into. So this is a nice, like, vanilla, safe place to, um, you know, use for these tutorials and show some of the process. I think the most important thing for me is structuring your files in a way that, in a predictable space. And so I do a lot of this, one, through, like, alphabetical naming conventions, and two, through a numbering. In almost every file I start, I have this core structure of underscore source, which is essentially kind of like a, a junk folder. Uh, trying to organize that as much as possible because it can get fairly large um, throughout the life cycle of a design. But this is kind of where I'll put, there's obviously not a lot in here because it's not a huge project, but any like images that I'm dragging off the internet or downloading or buying, honestly, vectors, images, fonts, anything core to the project that isn't the actual design itself, but it, that is um, complementary to my designs. I'll throw here so I have reference to it, but it's not anything that's production or assets for the actual build. It's more the building blocks that I'm putting in the designs. And so if I have something in a design that I need to change later, I can always reference that source file. The next big thing is I, I number these folders uh, just so that they're orderly and in the same spot in all my projects. Uh, so I don't have to go looking for things. This sketch file, I, right now this project only has one sketch file in it. But this is kind of my production file, the main go-to most current point of record uh, for my design. Um, this is nice because if I'm sharing or working with anyone else, I can always point them to that folder um, and make sure that the files in there are the most current. The files themselves, I've been doing this since college, but uh, all my core files and folders, frankly, usually have a date on them, and I do it by year, month, and day. Uh, just so that over time you'll see this nice index and evolution and version control really of all the things that you've worked on. But then I name the file, whatever it might be. Um, in the case of like Design Inc, there's many files in the sketch folder where it's sketch and then it's the date and then, you know, marketing site, uh, backend dashboards, acquisition, anything, any like main domain category of focus in the experience gets usually its own sketch file so my files don't get too huge. But that's what kind of this main first folder is. Um, two exports, this is where anything that I'm designing in Sketch that I'm exporting to InVision or to a deck or to any other deliverable for presentation um, goes into this folder. Uh, often I'll, I'll actually name the folder the name of the sketch file as well so there's a there's a parallel there from um, the file to the export and there's a simple dump of either pngs or pdfs um, or whatever i'm exporting for a prototype or for a deliverable so you can see here's those exports here assets this is anything that's uh it's similar to the source folder there's a lot of um, similarities here the assets folder for me is usually the go-to repository for the engineers. This is where I'll export all my SVGs for icons and logos, um, any raster graphics or images or backgrounds or textures. Uh, those all go here and these are simply 
um, what I want the developers or the engineers to copy and put in their build. So these are pixel perfect. These are exactly how I want them to exist in the application. And then anything that, that produces these assets um, usually is in a sketch file or in that source folder that we looked at at, at the beginning. Uh, lastly, um, I have a versions folder. Uh, I know that this is like a big issue currently um, in design. Um, and honestly, because all of these files are synced to Dropbox or Dribbble, um, both of those um, syncing and, and uh, drive services have version control. Um, so this isn't as necessary because I think a lot of technology is solving where you can go back and recover versions of a file. Um, I know there's some pretty cool people working on this as well. Um, shout out to you, Tim Van Dam. Point being, these files are very small um, and often it's nice to be able to jump back into something that you might have worked on uh, a month ago Then you kind of want to resurrect and look back into. And so often I'll use this version folder. Anytime I do a really significant change to something or add something large, where the, the file's taking kind of a, a new life of its own. I'll duplicate that file, drop the old one, rename with a new date, and keep moving forward. Often you'll see this file grow very large, but these files are so small, it usually doesn't matter when you're talking about uh, storage and, and the concerns of storage. So that's kind of it. If there's, if there's something specific for a project, like let's say I'm creating a prototype, um, I'll just keep going down this, this naming system, and let's say I'll call this proto. Let's say I'm doing something in principle or something that has an actual um, hardcore file that's not just an export. Um, I'll create another folder here and then create those prototypes. Um, I'm not doing that a lot right now. Um, we're using um, Envision and that supplements most of our um, prototyping needs, uh, but we also don't have a current native app at Design Inc. And so um, that's when I usually do a lot of prototyping, so we're doing native apps. If you want a prototyping uh, tutorial, I can get into that. I like using principle a lot, um, and I've considered doing some animations and some intros and transitions for this camel app, and so I've considered doing that um, as a tutorial. If you want that, let me know in the comments. But this is it. It's pretty straightforward. I think I've had to encourage designers to do anything as it relates to file naming and, and um, a file structure. I think consistency is really the thing. Uh, I know Matt Smith did a really good tutorial on this as well. I feel like I'm just doing all the tutorials he's doing randomly. Um, so honestly, go look at his first because it's probably um, more thorough. But the reality is that these are just disciplines and formats for you to stay organized and be successful. So whatever works for you, do that. Um, just make sure you stay consistent um, and don't rethink it. Uh, I think naming convention is the same way. People do dates differently. People name things differently. Uh, just figure out what works for you and, and don't think too much on it. Um, and then being consistent on it and making sure that you do that uh, throughout your projects, I think makes you faster and more efficient. So feel free to use this. Um, obviously this is a very quick tutorial, but just wanted to give you a look into um, how I organize things and hopefully it's valuable.